Hi everybody, welcome to Zephyr Travels. My name is Randy and in this video we are traveling to Northern Utah to Flaming Gorge Recreational Area. We start our video in Dinosaur National Monument at Green River Campground as we pull out of our campsite and make our way to Flaming Gorge Recreational Area. Now you're probably wondering why Diane is walking ahead of me and not in the truck with me. Well, our campsite, we ended up having to park in backwards to get the best positioning of the trailer to the site. And so I asked Diane to walk ahead just in case there was anybody coming down the road and I didn't want to meet somebody coming the wrong way. But we've got through all that and we're heading out on the road and we had an interesting ride. And one of the things we ran into was a oversized vehicle coming down the highway. And uh, we had to pull off and wait for it and as it came through, this thing was about the size of a small house. But it went through and without any issues and we continued on our way. But unfortunately, the rain hit and it got pretty rainy on the ride. Um, into Flaming Gorge Recreational Area. As you can see here as we're crossing the, the dam and power uh, station that the rain is coming down pretty heavy. Well we had much more to go when we hit our turn off and unfortunately it was a muddy dirt road that we had to travel down almost five miles. So needless to say when we got to the end of that road the truck was filthy. There was dirt up and down the, the airstream and my first stop was into the dump station because we needed to dump the trailer because we weren't able to do that at our previous campground but also just to rinse off some of the mud off the trailer it was just ugh, looked horrible unfortunately I didn't think to take pictures of it so you're just gonna have to take a look at the truck when I show that to you a little later when we arrived at the campground we came in and it was a downpour and the road to the campground is four miles of mud and as you can see how the truck looks it's absolutely filthy I haven't cleaned the truck but I did take a couple of days just to clean the trailer and even that's not perfectly clean the underside still loaded up with mud and such it's gonna take a power washer to clean all that off of it but oh you should see the mud up the mud was up and down the front of the trailer Ugh. I should have taken pictures of it, but it was raining when we got here. And the first thing we did is we pulled into the dump station because we needed to dump the tanks. And while I was dumping the tanks, I hooked a hose up to the water line and I just hosed the whole trailer off and got a lot of the mud off that way. So we stopped here at Flaming Gorge Visitor Center to check out the dam. Uh -huh. And it's actually a, a power generating dam. They have you know power stations in there that generators that produce electricity yeah so yeah so we walked around of course we had to go in the visitor center buy a couple things and uh, yeah it was a nice little break to me yeah now the visitor center you know is kind of small but it does have some displays on the wall you know pictures and such of you know when the dam was built 1957 I think it started so it's almost it's, it's older than me yeah um, and you know a little bit about you know the construction of it and everything and then the purpose of it you know this is the Green River which flows into the Colorado River which flows into Lake um, Powell and Lake Mead so this is all part of that water reservoir system that supplies water to these western states and it's really kind of neat now then you can see the the dam in the background here and you can you can actually drive across it the road goes right across it yeah, and you can walk along it and, yeah, walk. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you can actually, I don't think they let you walk on the road or on the side of the road anymore. That was blocked off. Oh, okay. But, but you can walk. They do have an observation point there that we walked up to, and you get you can see the, you know, the river the side dam. of the dam. Yeah, the whole dam. Yeah, you can see the whole damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, they don't have any dam tours. No, no, no. No dam tours. Uh, apparently, from what we heard in the visitor center, uh, they stopped them during COVID and, and that, that gave them an opportunity to fix some things that they needed to take care of. That, but unfortunately, they haven't been able to get um, a contract or whatever it's needed to get the tours back in, in function 
functioning again. So until and they can do that, the, the tours have been paused. Yeah, so it was still a pretty neat place to visit. Yeah, and this is all part of the, you know, it's all run by the National Parks. This is nat natural, natural, national forest area. Um, and it's, you know, it's actually a national recreation area, same as Lake, uh, Lake Mead mm -hmm. um, area. So it's pretty cool. All right. Thought we'd uh, share this all with you. Well, let me take a couple minutes and tell you a little bit about where we're staying here. This is Antelope Flats. And it's in the National Forest area uh, around uh, Flaming Gorge uh, Recreation Area. And it's, well, I think it could be a, you know, both Diane and I agree this probably could have been a much nicer campground it's it's kind of on the verge of being run down um, and it's kind of sad because I think it, it is a nice campground and I think you probably have a lot more people here if it was a little better taken care of and what I mean by that is when we got here the bathhouses were all locked because there was a plumbing issue um, the other thing that kind of gets me is that this campground, even though it's National Forest, it's not run by the National Forest. They subcontract that out to another company, and they're off to try to make an extra couple bucks here and there. And one of the things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way is we got here, and the first thing we needed to do was empty our tanks because the last campground we had didn't have a dump station. And we get over there, and, and the campground host comes over and goes, did you pay your $10 to dump your tanks? And I like, well, most places we go to, the dump stations included with your campground fees. Oh no, they want you to pay the extra $10 to dump your tanks and, and get water. And I thought that was kind of ridiculous, especially the water part, because you know there's really no other choice out here for water. I mean, there's no water in the campground. Just over by the dump station, they have uh, portable water that you can get. So that kind of bugged me. And then when as you spent some time here, literally we were the only trailer here the first night when we got here a couple of, and I think another one pulled in after us um, but the campground was totally empty and I guess they've just got one of the bathhouses open so it's usable but there's been a few people here right now this is the weekend and it's probably not quite 25% full um, and what really gets me is there's been a lot of people camping here in tents and, uh, and I'm just kind of wondering, what are they using for bathrooms? Um, because both bathhouses have been locked, and they've just unlocked one. And some of these people have been here Friday night, Saturday, and such. They've been here a couple of nights. Now, I think there's a group area over to the end here that maybe those bathhouses are working, or maybe over by the boat launch they could be working there. Really kind of surprised about that. Other than that, most of the campsites are pretty small. This is probably one of the longest ones, and, we, and it's probably 55, 60 feet deep from the back of the trailer to the little bit of a road here. A lot of them, um, we couldn't put the 28-foot uh, Airstream in, and it wouldn't, wouldn't be any place for the truck if we tried. So they are very small sites. Um, I did research and make sure when I reserved the site, I knew the size of it and picked one that would fit the trailer. Um, but then again, what, like both Diane are saying, this could be a much nicer, better place if they would just take a little bit of time and effort into it. Um, you know, cleaning up the area a little bit. And we did see the campground host was mowing here the other day around the site, so that helps a little bit. But, you know, maybe just investing a little bit into the sites, maybe taking some of the other sites that are a little too small and making them a little bit larger. Um, We've got a, a very old rustic picnic table here that's been painted and, you know, is paints chipping on it. I'd be kind of questionable if I had kids, to, you know, is that lead paint? Yeah, it looks pretty old. I'm not sure. They do have a nice fire pit. And they have this, looks like a, a t grill table. Um, it looks like they've gone through and taken out all the little charcoal grills and put these just platforms here and you're supposed to put your own little grill on it, I guess. Um, we put our Blackstone over here and, and using it there, but anyways, 
Um, this is Antelope Flats. Um, the cost on this for no hookups is $23. If you have a National Parks Pass, you pay half of that per night, which is what we have. So for $11.50, it's okay. You know, it's nothing great, nothing to write home about. And I've been into other campgrounds that I thought were nicer for the you know same amount of money. We could go back and look at Boulder Beach at Lake Mead and, and say that campground is $10 a night and it is far better than this. It's far better managed. We keep it nicer, keep it a lot nicer. Here it's, you know, it could be much better, but I think it's starting to get a little run down and they need to put some work into it. We're leaving today. We're heading over to the other side of the lake and we're going to a KOA. And I don't know why we're going to a K. I think we've been boondocking for over a week now, and we figured I figured we needed a little bit of a break, so I, I booked us into a KLA for a few nights. Hopefully, it gets warms up and we can use the swing pool and enjoy all that stuff that KLAs offer. Uh, so we're gonna leave here. We've only got about an hour's drive. It won't take us long to get there, and then uh, we'll show you the KLA and show you the other side of Flaming Gorge. Hey guys, we are in Wyoming, or actually a few footsteps away from Wyoming. This is the turning point to our trip. Right. Um, we don't really call it the destination because there's a lot of destinations. Right, right. But it really is the uh, goal of our whole trip. Right. This was the purpose of us. This trip was to get to Wyoming for the Airstream Rally, which is tomorrow. Um, well, we park tomorrow. We park tomorrow. The rally starts on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. But it's only taken us seven months to get here. That's true. Yeah, I mean, we're not known for being, I guess, ex excessively fast. So if you get behind us on the highway, just pass us. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right.